Rosh Hashanah is the start of a new year in the Jewish calendar and a moment to take stock of your soul. Unlike January 1st, it's serious stuff. It's said that on this day, God takes special note of us and our behaviors, writing us into the book of life. It's time for reflection. Where have you missed the mark? How can you grow and improve yourself this year? Where do you need to seek forgiveness? The last line of the poem read on Rosh Hashanah, the Unatana Tokef, is a super concise guide to how we start the new year off right. Teshuva and Tefila and Sadaka. Teshuva and Tefila and Sadaka. Let's break those down. Tshuva, the word for spiritual realignment, comes from a Hebrew root that means return. It gets translated usually as repentance. It's more like remembering who you truly are and striving to return there. Rosh Hashanah is actually a step along in the process of Teshuva, which starts a month earlier on the first of Elul and then kicks into high gear with the high holidays. Rosh Hashanah is two days long. It's full of food, prayer, and some creative rituals. Its name means head of the year and has a lot of other names too. The meals are a big deal. Dinners and lunches. Most memorable is the blessing over apples dipped in honey for a sweet new year. You'll also see round halas, sometimes with raisins, honey cake, sweet foods like honey carrots, kugels, tzimis. Plus, some people have a tradition of eating new fruits, a fiesta of things to taste for the first time in the new year. Sephardi Jews have a Rosh Hashanah Seder, including foods with names that are puns in Hebrew. For instance, the head of a fish gives you an excuse to say, so that we may be like the head and not the tail. It's like saying, get your head in the game. When you see people on Rosh Hashanah at synagogue or on the street, you can shout out Shana Tova or Shana Tova, which just means have a good year. Speaking of synagogue, if you go, you'll encounter a lot of special liturgy in a book called the Holiday Machzor. This is Tefillah, connecting through prayer. A highlight for many is singing the beloved melody, Avinu Malkeinu. You also hear the Torah stories of Abraham and Sarah, Hagar and Ishmael, and the famous Binding of Isaac story. And you'll hear the sounding of the shofar, Tukiya, that's the one little one. Then Shivarim, that's a three for. And then there's Trua, and that's like a machine gun. And then the long one, Gadola, comes from Gadol, which means big, and it's long. And then everyone sings, It's unbelievable. You're gonna love it. You should really just come out and check it out anyway. If you're gonna come once a year, might I recommend Shabbat though? It's a much easier time to get through. I'm just saying, I'm not here to push a narrative or an agenda, but Shabbat's fun. In the Torah, hearing the cries from a ram's horn is a key mitzvah, or commandment, of Rosh Hashanah. The 100 shofar blasts, there are three types, are meant to arouse and to awaken each person. There's a beautiful daytime ritual that is very engaging for kids called tashlich. People toss breadcrumbs into a nearby body of water to symbolically cast away old habits and mistakes. Rosh Hashanah is also a time of year to consider how to do more tzedakah, justice in the world, through community projects, taking a stand on important issues, or giving charity. Say after the high holiday appeal to your synagogue. At the new year, we turn the pages of our own life's book, be it tattered, torn, or terrific. Rosh Hashanah is an auspicious moment in time that invites us to wonder, what's the next chapter in my life all about? True, ah! Uh, and then the big one, Takiya Gadola! And then everyone claps! It's amazing! A new year rising, a 
new beginning Lift your head up, turn yourself around The world is spinning Feel the magic of a new day Open your heart to a fresh start Send your fears away You've made mistakes, you feel it You've got what it takes, believe it Any wrong can be made right Just forgive and you need not fight Shana Tova Umetuka It's Rosh Hashanah Shana Na 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 Tova Ume Umetuka Hit me up or in the honey It's Rosh Hashanah Shana Shana na 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 Tova Ume ume tuka Dip your apple in the honey On Rosh Hashana Shana na 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 Tova Ume ume tuka Hear the sounds of jubilation This Rosh Hashana Yehi ratzon Shen yele Rosh lo zana Sweet in life for those around us With joy and love Aminu malke Shoshana Give us life, Lord And sustain us Oh, deliver us To salvation Give us life, Lord And sustain us Oh, deliver us To salvation In this new year Oh, Shoshana Make your loved ones smile It's Oh, Shoshana Open your hearts to one another It's Oh, Shoshana And begin life Bible lesson comes to us from Exodus chapter 16 verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. 
So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it is the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what we are, that you complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked to the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. So he said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last workers only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of God for all God's people. May God's people say, Amen. Now cease from this shall cease.
Happy Rosh Hashanah. In today's message, we have the story, a continuation of the story of the Exodus path. It is Moses and Aaron leading the Israelites out of Egypt and continuing their way in journey on the way to the promised land. Along this path, the Israelites begin to complain about the lack of food. They are hungry, they're starving, they're struggling along the journey, and they begin to complain. And the Lord hears their complaints. And the Lord shares with, with Moses what to say to the people, and that the Lord is going to test the people. You see, this is where we get the story of manna from heaven, the food that God will provide the Israelites in the journey to sustain them. But not just manna. If we really pay attention to the story, they get meat in the evening and they get the manna in the morning. And God is calling on them to take that which is necessary for them to receive enough food for the day. And God will take care of them. So in the evening, they will get quail, a bird that will sustain them with meat in the evening. And they will get manna from heaven, a bread that they have never experienced will come to them in the morning. And God will provide for them. This is a way for the people to understand that God is with them in the journey and that God will sustain them. So God calls on Moses and Aaron to say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. It's a story about the journey of these Israelites as they travel, their struggles, their complaints, their, their fears, their anxieties, their hopefulness is all bundled in the story of the Exodus. But it is also God's story of hearing us, of caring for us, of delivering us from struggles and oppression. Do you know that God is with you? In the journey, in the midst of the journey, God is with us at all times. And the Israelites needed to be reminded of this in their, in their Exodus story. For they were feeling the pains of change. The struggles of a journey that is unknown as compared to the hardships, the normalcy that they had when they were in the land of Egypt. Yes, it was difficult and oppressive in Egypt, but at least they knew what was happening there. And they have this anxiety about the unknown. The Lord calls us to be hopeful even in the midst of the unknown. Now, we put this right alongside with this passage in Matthew, the gospel lesson, where Jesus speaks about the parable of the landowner and the day workers. You see, in the story of the day workers, people come into the journey at different points. And the master goes out to the place where the laborers are hanging out seeking a job. They're they're at the place, the unemployment line, so to speak. And the master goes and he gathers a number of the people and he says, come, work for a day's wage. I will pay you the fair daily wage, he says to the first group that comes. And then at several different points during the day, the Lord goes out, or the master in the story goes out, and gathers more workers. There's more work to be done. There's still space for more. He goes and he gathers more and he brings them back and he gives them a job. So they've worked part time. And he goes back out again and there's the group that's worked a quarter time. 
And he goes back out and there are those who get the job in the last hour. It comes time to pay. And the master calls those who have only worked an hour or less, come receive your pay. To their surprise, they receive the same wage that those who showed up at 7 o'clock in the morning will receive. And to the surprise of those who came at 7 o'clock in the morning, they find out that all the others who have come later received the exact same wage as they have. And they begin to complain and grumble. And the master has to remind them that it's his money. It's his resources. And he has the right to do with that as he pleases. And it pleased the master to offer hope to those who showed up at five o'clock in the evening, just as much as the hope that was given to those who showed up at seven o'clock in the morning. To give them the hope and to sustain them. Here's where it mixes with the Old Testament lesson. To sustain them. That daily wage will provide the resources to give them shelter. And to sustain them with a meal. To put clothes on their back. And to care for their families. That's the story that's in both, both the scriptures sustaining the needs of the people. But both stories have more to it as they are about our relationship with God. And that relationship with God that calls us together in common interest and in common good, calls us together to praise the Lord, to work in the vineyard of the Lord, and to be blessed. Sometimes that Matthew text gets related to people who come to faith late in life and those deathbed confessions and conversions. And some people would argue, oh, they really couldn't be a faithful person because it's hours before they die and they, they confess their faith and they convert and become a Christian. They become a person of faith in that last hour. How is it that they can get to heaven? Jesus tells us in the parable, it's not for us to decide. The master can decide to receive and to bless whomever the master decides. Our job is to give our praise and glory to God and to be faithful. No matter whether we came to the faith early in the morning or if we came to it in the last hour, God is with us. And God calls us out to reach, to care for, and to bless others. That's the narrative that's in the stories today. It's about God's blessing, receiving it, claiming it, understanding that it is a gift from God. This weekend, Rosh Hashanah comes to us. Friday and Saturday, Rosh Hashanah celebrations have taken place. A time of introspection, a time of new year, a time to seek God's blessing that our name might be in the good book. It's the Jewish new year. A time to renew, to revitalize, to refresh, and to seek to be better in this year than we were in the last. To seek to grow in understanding of our relationship with God more this year than we had in the past. Forgiveness and blessings and hopefulness. The Jewish New Year, this Rosh Hashanah, it is not a sorrowful time. It is a time of celebration and blessing, a feast of sorts. Shana Tova. The new year is upon us. God's blessing is before us. It's a new year. 
for our Jewish brothers and sisters. May it also be a new year for us as, as we continue to move through this pandemic, as we continue to seek a new path and, and find a way forward. A time for introspection for us. A time to pause and to give praise to God and to see where God has worked in our lives and how God's movement is with us. Where is God providing you manna? Where is God sustaining you in the journey? We might not be eating manna and we may not be eating quail, but what we do have is a gift, a gift from God. We may not be laborers in a field, but we are called to work for the kingdom. That is to build the kingdom and to be in relationship with one another as we are in relationship with God. To look, to see, and to improve. A new year, a new day, a new time, however you look at this season, however you might understand Rosh Hashanah, however you might understand your relationship with God, God loves you, and so do we. God has called you God has redeemed you, and God seeks for you to be in relationship with God and to improve day by day to be the best that you can. Let us be about building the kingdom of God. Friends, the church is coming back to life. It's coming back to life in the community gathered together. St. Luke's has returned to its building in its building. And we are slowly coming back together, maintaining, maintaining the practices of good health as we must during this pandemic, understanding the gift of social distancing while we long for the embrace of being close together, we are coming together. It's a new season for us. It's rebuilding. It's reviving, a revival of the church. Not only at St. Luke's, but around the world. May this be like a new year for us as we come together, as we build the church, as we be the body of Christ. As David Adragna sang at the beginning of the service, we are the body of Christ. We are called together and we're called to reach out. Our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community are part of the family of God. And we are called to reach out to our brothers and sisters in blessing, in peace. When you encounter your Jewish friends today, give them the blessings, Shana Tova. Give them the blessings, Shalom. Give them the blessings of peace. Let us be a blessing to one another. When you reach out in the world, have a heart of generosity and share God's love. One smile, one good word, one relationship building activity at a time. To the glory of God, we are the body of Christ. So let us journey, let us take the manna let us give thanks to God and let us walk in the light. Amen.
There's a wideness in God's mercy Like the wideness of the sea There's a kindness in God's justice That is more than liberty There is welcome for the sinner And more graces for the good There is mercy with our Savior There is healing in God's love For the love of God is broader Than the measure of our mind And the heart of the eternal Is most wonderfully If our love were but more simple, we would take Christ at His word, and our lives would be illumined by the presence of our Lord.
Another year you made a promise Another chance to turn it all around And do not say this for tomorrow Embrace the past day you can live for now And I will give the world to That's right, open my soul, cause everything goes I 
new beginning when God is so close Making choices and show by the floor So just imagine Love that in that you when you were just dance, dance, dance Go feel the creeping up on you So just dance, dance, dance Come on, all those mixers you can do So just dance, dance, dance